would I lie to you? The show that not only encourages liars, it rewards them. On David Mitchell's team tonight, it's the star of Pirates of the Caribbean. Johnny Depp knows him. It's Mackenzie Crook. <laughs> and a uh, naturalist and TV wildlife presenter. Now, look, I'm not going to debase myself by doing cheap double entendres at his expense. I will just give you the ingredients, and you can take it from there. Birds, tits, short-haired beavers. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Chris Packham! <laughs> and joining Lee Mack tonight, the country's most famous Victoria behind Beckham and Station. It's the writer and broadcaster, Victoria Corrin! <laughs> and a fine comedian who once starred as the voice of the Welsh Tourist Board. Imagine demeaning yourself by appearing in an advert. <laughs> Rod Gilbert! <laughs> and so to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them to make things harder. They've never seen the card before, and they've got no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And Rod is first up. Rod, please reveal all. I was sacked from my job at a zoo when my boss found out I had been taking photos of the animals wearing hats. <laughs> so, t just to clarify, were you wearing the hats or the animals? No, I was taking photos of the animals wearing hats. Yes, just to clarify, were you wearing hats or the animals? <laughs> well, you think I was taking photos of animals while I was wearing multiple hats? <laughs> I would say that in the world of oddness, a man wearing two hats is no odder than an animal wearing one. Can you give us some examples of animal hat combos that you took photos of? Uh, yeah, I've done uh, monkeys in bowler hats. Of course. <laughs> I've done a hippo in a flat cap. <laughs> and, uh, well, I, I was going to call him a snake. It wasn't a snake. It was in the reptile house, but I don't know what he was, but he was wearing a fez. <laughs> Were these miniature hats? Can I, can I ask, Rod, were these what, little animal what, hats or human hats? On the hats? hippo? Are you mad? <laughs> no, but on the thing in the reptile house, I'm thinking a full-size fez is going to just hide the creature. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, so but what you're saying is, were the hats to scale? Thank you. <laughs> Rod, were the hats, were the hats, hats to scale? <laughs> the hats, are, well, I mean, to scale is a grand way of putting it, but I would certainly try and, if, you know, try and make the hat fit. Right. <laughs> The top of a hippo's head is actually quite a slippery affair. Oh, you've got to get the right hat. <laughs> what, was your, what was your official role at the zoo? Uh, general dog's body, basically. I, I get the feeling that if you were going to put hats on animals, you'd have gone for deer stalkers and bear skins, you know? I didn't say I didn't. Ah. We just oh. haven't got all the way through the animals. OK. Oh, right. <laughs> you name a hat, you name an animal. Deer stalker. Oh, uh, no, I didn't do a deer stalker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a deer stalker. It wasn't a comprehensive. You can't but you cross had that a from every animal. You had a massive hippo sized yes. fest. No, it was a regular flat you, cap. So what you're saying what is, you... saying is, I didn't have every single animal in the zoo, and there wasn't every hat. I didn't cross reference every single combination of animal and hat. I just put some on some. <laughs> Where, where was this zoo? Was this a Welsh zoo? Was it, it was, summer bird gardens? It was, uh, it was down in, uh, in Pembrokeshire in a place called uh, Oaksnade. Oaksnade? Yep. There's a, there's a chain of snade zoos, isn't there? There's Oaksnade, Rexnade. And how did it all come to an end? What, what, what stopped this? I got caught. And who was it who apprehended you? It was the, uh, the manager of the zoo. Uh. As a zoo owner and manager, I wouldn't have been offended. I, I can't see anyone being offended by a fez on a snake and a flat cap on a hippo. I'd, I'd, I'd have been... <laughs> Just I'd, what the zoo needs. If, if, it's, if it's down there in South Wales at this oak snade or something, I'd, I'd have thought any little hat on a cat would have done the... Why, trick, because it's you know? a Welsh zoo? <laughs> Our animals aren't good enough and their natural habitat. We'd better dress them up a bit. <laughs> you racist bastard. <laughs> David, what do you think? Well, uh, I'll ask my team first. I mean, I've never heard of Oaksnade Zoo. Have you ever heard of Oaksnade Zoo? <laughs> Is that the most you doubt about us? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. I can't, I can't, I can't I can't a hippo. Kenzie, have you... Oaksnade Zoo. No, I haven't. No. <laughs> 
my girlfriend owns a zoo. We, we tour zoos and Oaksnade's never been on our agenda. Oaksnade, <laughs> the zoo that shares a syllable with Whipsnade. <laughs> I think Mackenzie's right. That is the, that's the chink in the otherwise impenetrable armour of plausibility. <laughs> that oats need zoo doesn't exist. Um, I think we're very happy to say lie. You're saying it's a lie. So, uh, Rod, were you telling the truth or were you telling us a lie? Well, chaps, I'm afraid I was telling a lie. <laughs> Yes, it was a lie. Uh, Rod wasn't sacked from his job at a zoo because he was caught taking photos of animals wearing hats. Um, uh, Mackenzie, you're up next. Possession. Possession, right. Now, there's a box, Mackenzie, under the desk. Would you take the possession out, pop it up on the desk, and then read the card for us, please? Oh. Oh, wow. Uh, this, is, this is my orchidometer. It was a present from my sister. What, what does an orchidometer do? No, yeah, that's true. I'll tell you what, I've seen one of those and it wasn't called an orchidometer. <laughs> Admittedly, I haven't seen the whole length of it before. <laughs> what, uh, what's an orchidometer, Mackenzie? It is a piece of medical apparatus yes. used for determining the size of testicles in male humans. Yes. The size of male testicles in humans. I'm 42, nobody's ever gone, hey, extra large. I don't. This was bought for me by my sister. Wait a minute. Uh, what? Some of them are so small, they're tiny. You'd be surprised. <laughs> My sister bought this for me for nostalgic so you keep reasons. Nostalgic? Yeah. <laughs> to to remind you. Hang on, if this is to remind you both of the good old days, we don't want to be. <laughs> Surely, nostalgia. In my sister, when I was growing up, you know, as my size bit, she would do a little mark, pencil mark on the wall, kitchen wall, fair enough. But. For your testicles? <laughs> You know how when someone gives you a jumper, they say, oh, try it on now? <laughs> Which one are you? You must have done it. I've, ne I've never done you it. You liar! I've never done it. <laughs> why would I want I'll to tell you it? why, because the second we get out of the studio, I'm doing it, so I don't... <laughs> I am so... I want to do it now in front of you. <laughs> well, do you know what? I think we'd all be very happy for you to do it now. Let's do it. Oh, no! Have you watched it? been anywhere near any. Well, don't bring it to me. I don't want to know. Hey, Rob, bring back memories. <laughs> <laughs> right, I will do it, but I'll do it under the desk. Are you not going to get your... Come on. <laughs> I'm going to get one form. Just one, then. Meet me halfway. Come on, then. Come on, then. No, no, no. Yes. Why did you just sit Why did you get Because when I was younger, I was a very slight chap. Not the when you were fine younger, you were specimen slight. of man. Blimey! Well, were you today. a stick man? <laughs> and my, and I, I used to have to go to a hospital to be measured in all sorts of creative way. Oh. Keep and it light. One of the ways <laughs> they measured me was using an orchidometer. And, they measured uh, your testicles, really? Yeah, not with that one. What are but you, you going to say? With your testicle measuring device, you spoil us, Ambassador. <laughs> The question is whether his sister got it for him, and it's not what this is. His sister got it for him. He's telling the truth. Can you not? Am I... But this can't be uh, real. Take this, those. This can't be real. <laughs> Have a look at him through those. No, tell him your sister gave you that as a present. Have you got truth glasses? <laughs> <laughs> They're not allowed on this show. <laughs> It is time to take a guess. Imagine going to the doctors and going, is that normal to have that many? <laughs> take a look at this, Doc. <laughs> Tell me that's normal. They're purple, but it's the wrong amount. <laughs> OK, what do you think? You want to go with that? OK, then. Uh, well, why not? It, it, it sounds true. True. Saying true. OK, Mackenzie, what's the answer? It is true. 
It was true. Mackenzie's sister did buy him that orchidometer. Uh, Mackenzie frequently brings it out at dinner parties and uses it as an icebreaker. And more often than not, a morale crusher. <laughs> and at the end of that round, the scores are level. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who is a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim that it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Simon. <laughs> Uh, Mackenzie Crook, what is Simon to you? This is Simon, and when I hoaxed my school by burying some treasure, Simon found it, and the police were called. Okay, all right. Uh, Chris, how do you know Simon? This is Simon. In a virtual world, we're married. <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, David Mitchell, your relationship with Simon. This is Simon. He has a large tattoo of my face on his knee. <laughs> so there we have it. Um, is Simon Mackenzie's treasure hunter, Chris's cyber spouse, or David's tattooed fan? Lee's team, where would you like to start? David. Yes. How do you know Simon? Um, I know him because <laughs> when I was doing a book signing mm -hmm. of a comedy book, uh, he came and asked for the book to be signed and also asked me to sign my name underneath the tattoo of my face on his knee. When, he's got, when, he's, when you sign the face, is yeah. the face normal when the knee is stretched? <laughs> or is the face normal when it's not stretched? Look, it's my face. It's not normal at all. <laughs> I need to ask you a question, though. but you've got to answer this honestly. Yeah. When no, the... no, no, you no, don't. That's the whole point of the When, when, when the people from through. Would I Lie to You said, mm. we're going to invite on that man who's got a tattoo of your face on his knee, mm -hmm. did you say, oh, good, I'd like to see him again? I am, of course, thrilled <laughs> to, uh, to remake the acquaintance of, um, of yeah. Why so, are you... <laughs> Simon. <laughs> Simon. Yeah. Simon. So I did something just to digress a little bit. I once got this is true backstage after a gig. A woman asked me to sign her bosom, and I, I went to sign the, with the pen that she gave me, and and the pen didn't work. I, and without thinking, I went to the other breast and went. <laughs> <laughs> Mackenzie, how old were you when you buried this treasure? Uh, maybe 13 or 14. So what was the treasure? Diamonds. What? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. How many got everyone's attention? <laughs> diamonds. Fake diamonds. It was a hoax. Uh, so how, was, uh, how many fake diamonds? Uh, probably six. Where did you get all the six fake diamonds? From my sister's jewellery box. What? And then you rang up the police and hoaxed them into coming down to find some fake diamonds? N no, no. They were... They were I put them in the tin, and they, they were dredged in the school pond. So I knew if I placed it in the pond, it, it would be found. And where did he fit into this? But Simon found the tin with the supposed diamonds and a letter that I'd faked. Uh, what did it say on the letter? It said something along the lines of, these are stolen, smuggled diamonds. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so you're telling me that uh, uh, diamonds were found with a letter, you go, these are smuggled diamonds. Yeah. Or, uh, and someone went... We better find the police. This is genius. <laughs> was there a punishment involved? Nobody ever found out. It was me. The police came back and said that they'd analysed the diamonds and they weren't diamonds and it was obviously a hoax. So they caught Ronnie Biggs, but they couldn't get you. <laughs> Are you happy to move on now? Yeah. Chris, you're married in a virtual world. Tell us a little bit more about how you met Simon. Second Life is a, 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 a virtual world that exists on the internet, secondlife.com. And I'm one of the <laughs> players. The various roles that you can play, you, have, you, you invent an avatar for yourself. And you are? My avatar is Audrey Helpburn. It's what? <laughs> Audrey Helpburn. So you're playing the woman in this relationship? Yes. So why have you got a second life as a, as a woman? Chris? Well, part of the whole thing is that you can be whatever you want to be. And as I say, a lot of people take <laughs> Just it... Just start thinking I am what I am. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, I'll change my personality. I'll be Audrey Hepburn, as the Audrey Hepburn <laughs> happens to be one of my real-life heroines. Right. And Couldn't do Hepburn because someone had already done it. And what is Simon's avatar? He is Simon Bernstein, Jr. 
Right and, and where, <laughs> right, and where did you meet him in this virtual world? Well, when you go on there, you, 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 you can go to places and then you meet people, they yeah, contact you. A bit you. like real life, but for can sad people. people. <laughs> Simon and his pretend name is Simon. Yes, but his real name is Simon Morgan. Presumably, rather like Audrey Hepburn, he couldn't be Simon Morgan because someone had already done that. There were about 20 million people. No, but, but do you're this not thing. Audrey Hepburn. No, help burn. Yeah, no, but you wanted it. Yes, but he is Simon <laughs> Morgan. Is it? It's like a psychiatrist coach. You are not Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you again. We went through this last week. You're not Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> I still haven't established where you met Simon Bernstein, Jr. I met him at a cocktail party. Yes. I married him for his money. But I'm, I married... No, I believe you because when you said you married him for his money, do you see his face? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He couldn't help it. You, you, you said well, that? No, that was the ink on his knees drying. <laughs> Well, what are you going to say, Lee? Who well, do you this, think it is? Uh, this is this is a tricky one for me. Victoria, who is who is he connected with? If this was a poker game, yeah. and I had to make a call, I'd say Mackenzie's the one who's not bluffing. You're going by body language. Well, that's interesting. What is it about his body that tells you he's he's not bluffing it? He has a certain he has a sort of calm. I know for a fact he's under heavy medication. <laughs> I don't. Know <laughs> I came at it from a different way. The Simon is far too geeky for tattoos on his knees, but the avatar thing I think sounds just a bit too plausible. I think it's Mackenzie. Well, listen, Victoria's a top poker player. She knows body language better than anybody. So are you saying that it's definitely Mackenzie Crook? You're saying that it's the You're buried a treasure? Yeah. OK. Simon, would you like to reveal your true identity? My name is Simon, and when we were at school together, I discovered Mackenzie's buried treasure. <laughs> Everything that uh, Mackenzie said was absolutely true. Simon found the treasure Mackenzie buried at his school. And actually, we can show you the letter. Have a look at this. <laughs> In this tin, I have placed stolen... You don't mind me doing it with an accent, do you? <laughs> In this tin, I have placed stolen diamonds. Are oh, you going to do it with an accent? <laughs> I would never claim to have your range as an actor, David. <laughs> Shall I do posh and repressed or repressed and posh? <laughs> well done. Well, thank you very much, Simon, for coming on. How about that? Which brings us on to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth but against the clock. First up, it's... Ah, uh, that's Lee. I once helped my mum and dad look for something they'd lost using a Ouija board. Was it a relative they'd lost? <laughs> <laughs> David's team, do you believe that? Um, what was it that they'd lost? They, they, they'd lost uh, an important document. <laughs> OK, I don't want you to be more specific. <laughs> Actually, yes, be more specific. <laughs> a very important document. <laughs> okay. It was a document that... Uh, okay. It was a document? Yes. All oh, right. Yes. Okay. Did I mention how important it was? You're going too quickly. It was a document. <laughs> okay. It was a document. Uh, was, was the doc did the document matter? Oh, it was important. Yes. An important document. <laughs> I can't stress upon you how important it was. Yeah. It was very important. What was the important document? <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's the, that's the thing. I can't... Uh, I was only young, and I can't remember exactly... They lost it. <laughs> It was something to do with a potential court case. Uh, I don't think it ever got to court, but they were worried that a thing well, was going to... Well, of course, they didn't have the documents. <laughs> they were worried that something might go to court, and they knew if they found this document, it would mean that they were proved to be in the right about the case. I genuinely can't remember <laughs> anything more about it. <laughs> I can't Can we specifics? concentrate on the world of the dead? <laughs> did they get through to your grandmother? She went, where did you last see it? <laughs> Retrace your stuff. Yeah. Why, where did you get the Ouija board from? I think one of the, the, the regulars, because we, we grew up one in a pub. One of the regular what? We grew up in a pub, and um, before the invention of the internet, um, between three and five, the pub closed, and you had to think of something yeah, to do. Yeah, obviously dabble in the occult. Dabble in the occult. <laughs> and believe it or not, my mum and dad and all the regulars would have a little lock-in, and yeah. me and my brother were invited to do the Ouija board. If only you'd had Jenga or something more wholesome. <laughs> uh, and did you hold hands? That's a seance. Don't be an idiot. Uh, sorry, I'm, I, 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 I get my we'll, bullshit mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> How did you ask the question? I remember it. My dad said, okay. Spirit world, we have a very, 
very, very, <laughs> very. I can't stress on you and upon you enough how important a document is that we must find. Yeah. And they told us where it was. What did they spell out? They spelt out uh, in the attic. So that your, were your parents massively into the occult? No, I mean, it wasn't a problem. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, it was just a bit of fun in the afternoon. And Ouija boards was cheeky in the 70s before these horror films. Right. Oh, yeah. Up until then, it was a, well, Wallington's, the 70s. a Wallington's family game. <laughs> <laughs> David, time to, uh, to be after uh, uh, MB Ouija yeah. board. Picture all my family. I'm trying Ouija board. <laughs> so, David, what's it going to be? Uh, Truth so or lie? Well, I think. True. You think it's true? I think it is. I think it's true. I, I was not thinking it's true, but my team think it's true. So You're the I'm, captain, I'll David. Go with you, the you, team. Okay, you say true. Uh, Lee, what's the answer? The answer is it is in fact true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's true. He did once help his parents look for something they'd lost using a Ouija board. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a Ouija board is, it's like Scrabble for dead people. <laughs> Next. It's Victoria. If I ever get stuck on a crossword clue, I phone Tim Henman for help. <laughs> he hasn't let me down yet. Right. Thing. I think that's a very cruel line. The, he hasn't let me down yet. Oh. We all know what that's an allusion to. His repeated letting down of the entire nation. <laughs> I think it's, you know, tennis is difficult. And I, I'd just like to say I wouldn't necessarily have won Wimbledon. <laughs> Obviously, if I practice as much as Tim Henman, I'd bloody well expect to, but no. <laughs> um, uh, right, so how do you know Tim Henman? I met Tim Henman when he was promoting a sort of tennis academy thing and I went and played tennis with him at Wimbledon. Did you play at Wimbledon? Yeah, I, w I should say, I was right about it. It wasn't just like, oh, Victoria Gorham's got to come in and play. You used to ring up Tim Henman to ask him difficult crossword things? Yeah. yeah. How did you get round that sensitive issue of going, six down? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Tim Henman is particularly good at crosswords. He's got to be good at something. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I would He's say that Tim tennis. Henman is relatively good at tennis. So. <laughs> you could almost say a professional. No. <laughs> I'm curious, of all the people you meet in the course of your job, you choose a tennis player of sorts to advise you on crosswords. Very, he's very into crosswords. So you're really? saying at this point in this clue I can't get, what we need is some of the skills that it takes to, you know, choke during a tie-break. <laughs> You're turning against him now, aren't you? Get your mind on. Which side of the fence are you on? Yeah. How did the subject of crosswords come up when you were playing I was doing this? a crossword while waiting for him. He was doing To serve. <laughs> to get one in. <laughs> yeah, that's what you <laughs> so I was doing a crossword and, and he came in and it was kind of a bonding thing because he said, and like crosswords, let me have a look. What do you think, Mackenzie? Do you think it's plausible? I think it might be plausible, mm. yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, cryptic or just regular? No, cryptic. Well, he's not an idiot. You can bring <laughs> someone... Oh, yeah, it's got three letters, household pet starts with D. Cat! <laughs> Mackenzie thinks it's plausible. Packham is saying... I think it's sadly probably true. Probably oh, right, so you... True. Come so on. I don't have to think. You're saying true? True. OK. So, Victoria... You think right. I phoned Tim Henman to ask him the answer to crossword, please? Obviously, that's a lie. <laughs> 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 no, you didn't. I mean, it's a lie. Victoria doesn't phone Tim Henman for help whenever she gets stuck on a crossword clue. Next! <laughs> it's Rod. Oh. I once paid for some tapas with a Nissan Micra. <laughs> Tapas, Nissan Micro. How much tapas were you buying? <laughs> One meal's worth of tapas. Worth of tapas. So what cash value of this tapas? In the, in the area of £15. OK, why? I didn't have any money. But weren't you aware that a Nissan Micro, even in probably <laughs> quite scruffy condition, would be worth a lot more than £15? Yeah, but if you haven't got any money, all you've got is a Nissan Micro. What are you going to do? <laughs> I don't suppose I'd eat out in restaurants. <laughs> well, I'll drive home and have some toast. I couldn't drive home, I saw my car for some tapas. <laughs> oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. 
So th did they accept the, the, the car in payment? Uh, yes. How many of you were eating? Uh, eight. Eight and of you sharing £15 worth of tapas? I had £15 worth. We all had roughly, I suppose. Why don't I? I didn't check. But you me. didn't offer... <laughs> <laughs> you didn't offer the Elephant Micro for everyone's meal. You said, well, I only had this, this, and this. The Nissan Micro's only covering that. You can pay for your own, everyone else. And I mean, that might have been the time to be a little bit, you know, a little bit generous. I, I am giving a car away here. Did none of the others think that they might chip in to save your car? Um, somebody did bail me out, so I get, had to pay them with, with my car. That's all I had. They said, oh, I'll pay so you on. So it was one of your friends that you gave the car to, not the, pe the proprietors of the restaurant, then? Well, obviously not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so one of your friends said, I'll give you the 15 quid. I'll pay your share. But you, but, uh, you can't, like, owe it to me. You can't give it to me next week. <laughs> I, I, want, I want something in exchange for it now. <laughs> Look in your pockets. I've got a handkerchief. Oh, I've got my that? shirt. It'll be embarrassing to take my shirt off. But it'll have Watch. to be the car. <laughs> I think what happened was, she said, I'll pay your share. I said, I've got nothing to give you. I can give you my car. And I don't think it occurred to her to say, no, don't do that. Give me 15 quid next week. I'll take the car, is what she said. What was the value of the car? Two and a half thousand I paid for it. And I, how, how long before the day? I lost £2,485 on the day. <laughs> <laughs> it was good tapas. It was nice. We had, uh... <laughs> I had uh, Albon D gas. I had, um, croquette ass. Cro you know, croquettes. Not patronise me. And, um, <laughs> croquette ass. And I had, uh, gambas a la plancha, grilled prawns. No, no, no. And then no. I threw in the floor mats, uh, for some patatas bravas. <laughs> right, David, what do you think? <laughs> is, is he telling the truth? I think not. I saw it. But, but it's so sort of odd and weird and... I, th I mean, I think it's a lie. It's a lie. Think, yeah. It's a lie. We're all saying yeah. it's a lie. Yeah. OK. Rod Gilbert. Truth or lie? It is a... True. <laughs> so, just to be clear, yeah. everything you just said was true. Every word of it. <laughs> you are a moron. <laughs> and that noise signals time is up and it's the end of the show and I can tell you, well, what a shocker. Lee's team have won by six points to four. <laughs> but, of course, it's, uh, it's not just a team game and my individual liar of the week this week is Mackenzie Crook. Yes, uh, Mackenzie Crook. I suppose the clue was in the name. Never trust anyone called Mackenzie. Good night. <laughs> well done.